Greetings, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Welcome to another episode of Chaotic Comic Book Cover Displays and more. And um, I'm I'm with uh, Rob, cheap comic collector, and Will, a couple comics, and um, Mike, easy comic readers, trying to uh, get on, but um, he's having technical difficulties right now. So it's just the three of us until someone else. Uh, comes but i do I, I do want to take a moment of silence for baltimore i want to do that just you know even if it's like a few minutes so love and prayers out to baltimore okay so um yeah, as you guys know from the shorts, man, I've been getting some crazy scores. And I'll, I'll kick it off here. Uh, so I'm here. I want to see him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll start off with, uh, oh, man, should I, should I just go with, okay. So these I got for a quarter from my friend Dave, who I used to jam with. If, I, if you're uh, watching this, Dave, thank you so much, man. I plan on... Uh, he, he, he actually moved closer to me. So, but uh, here's a, uh, oh, wait, I got to actually, let's do this. Yeah, go big. Yeah, go big. Go big. <laughs> uh, this is Black Knight um, number two, a newsstand. And these are really, really nice condition. I'm not sure what year this is. And here's uh, Black Knight number three. Pretty yeah. cool. I feel like these came out of the early 90s. Yeah, this yeah, was after the, the awesome like Avengers runs, right, that had the Black Knight in it. But these covers are pretty cool. i never even seen these before. I kind of want to just jump into a, a big score here that I, you guys already know about. But... Um, I, I got this online, right? And all it said was missing, right? So it's Marvel Secret Wars and it's missing, right? So you know it's missing pretty much, but it wasn't missing. Number <laughs> eight wasn't missing. So here's number one. And I got these for less than a dollar. For some reason, this wonderful person on eBay gave me a refund. I'm like, oh, what's that about? That's a little suspect. Right, hmm. you know, we we tend to suspect others that we don't know, <laughs> but it actually, it's all pretty high grade. I can't believe this. You know, just a couple of years ago, you know, wow. you can't buy this stuff for more than like I don't know, ten bucks, right? I mean, yeah, more, I mean that's a pretty highly sought after book. Yeah, I, I just can't believe that I got this. So I need to go back and like totally think. Um, this eBay person. So, you know, everyone, you know, I grew up on these. And so I kind of, I still remember the story, but it's, it's vague. I know in this one, uh, Spidey takes on the entire X-Men <laughs> <laughs> and actually bests them somehow. Right. <laughs> and this one's really cool um, with the Hulk, of course. I mean, anyone who's watching this probably knows about all these covers and, Actually, Marvel's reprinting these currently, right? Right. And they're making some uh, foil versions, too. Yeah, I'll be right I back, see guys. that. I see that. And sometimes, you know, that number eight foils, people are going to get that. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to move through these. Everyone's seen these before. Everyone knows about them. But um, So I'll do this quick. You gotta love these Zet covers. Can you guys see that? All right, Doctor Doom. We all know these covers, right? So I should go into more obscure stuff that I have, but I just can't believe this, man. And then when I did that short, I w I wasn't thinking that. So that was genuine shock. And this is like a high grade. It's got like a, a little roll on. 
I mean, did I do good here or what? I mean, <laughs> what the freak? And then we're coming up one of my favorite um, covers of all time. So get, guess which Secret Wars was missing? 12? The Magneto cover? <laughs> it wasn't this one. This is one of my doing... favorites. I was oh, going to go awesome. and just spend some coin on this. I mean, who doesn't love this this cover? And Doom kind of awesome. actually does, if I remember correctly, does uh, trick the Beyonder, right? And here's 11. It was 12. 12 oh, was okay. missing. Does 12 have some significant key factor or mm. you guys know? I Not don't. that I'm aware of other than it's the last issue. <laughs> I'm going to turn over to you guys. The story up, but. I'm going to turn over to you guys so I can check the chat. And um, yeah, that's cool. Do you want to go, Rob or Will? Which oh, one? Sure, I can go. Okay, yeah, yeah. cool. All right. So I grabbed... Uh, just the next whatnot box in my stack because I didn't want to show stuff that I showed on the channel. So uh, we'll see what's in here. Oh, cool. It's all the same thing. <laughs> all the same stuff. Yeah, it's all the same title. I, I lucked out. I got an entire box of King Conan. Wow. And whatnot. They ended up being like 51 cents a piece with the shipping. Wow. Um, so this will be my first time looking at them too. I just... I counted how Greetings, many were in there. Dope. Oh, it's Thanks not all being here. I thought it was. There might be a couple other randoms in there. But uh, we got number nine. Number nine. Hold on. I'm going to hide that. Let me see that. Wow. And generally, you don't care about too much about condition unless it's complete, right? Right. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, and these are, I mean, these are nice. They, they haven't been bagged or anything. There's a couple nicks in it and stuff i am getting a little pickier because i don't yeah. want my entire collection to be just junk yeah <laughs> I, I, I try to avoid the ratty stuff unless it's super old and i could read but, it you know? and, and it was in danger of becoming that way because of the the way i was doing the channel and stuff but uh vex pop thanks is, for being here bro yeah mike zek was brilliant man there is one or two others uh in here i guess this is raiders of the lost ark number three from the the movie adaptation here, I'll go. Should I go full screen? That's what uh, Friar Tuck is doing. Am I doing something wrong here? Um, I could do this for now, right? <laughs> is that what he wants? <laughs> okay, cool. And yep, there I am. And so there's uh, another King Conan number nine. This one's was in a bag. It's in a little bit better shape. There's no uh, no spine takes on it, so it looks pretty good. The other one was curved a little bit. This one's nice and flat, so. Cool. Uh, but I mean, there's two. That means I get to keep one. And if nobody uh, grabs the other one, it'll end up in the trade pile. <laughs> there's yeah. number eight. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, I got a lot of these Conans um, on the cheap, but I don't have any of the King Conans. Number seven. And number five. Hey, Cody. Thanks for being here, man. Really appreciate it. Number four. And number three. And most of these bagged ones have price stickers on them of $1.50 from somewhere. Surprised <laughs> they didn't sell it that, but there's number two. I think the spec market is slowly... Like, no, no, it's quietly actually um, imploding because there's, there's no reason why I should have got those. Yeah. I mean, people were going nuts for that that number eight there. And then number six. Very cool. So is, it, um, is this John uh, Buscema art or Ernie Chan? Um, I don't really know. I, I, I don't it's see okay. a it's signature. Okay. Yeah. That's the whole thing about pulling these out that we just got. Number 16. That's a nice cover. I like that one. Cool. 
And the stickers are all in the bags if you see the sticker in there in the middle. This one's cool too, number 15. Nice, uh, yeah, I whatever see that thing is. <laughs> <laughs> and second copy of that. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like about this box was once it won, the guy put stopped putting stuff in the box, so it wasn't full all the way when I wanted. <laughs> yeah. Number 14. Thanks for being here, Zodiac. Number 13. Very cool. So these will go up on your claims? Yeah, yeah, that, that's the rule. <laughs> so part of this is but, just handling. But if they don't get claimed during the sale, they will immediately go into my collection if I don't yeah, already so have part them. of this is handling them, right? It's just it, there's something yep. about it. 11. Especially this old bronze and copper, right? Whenever I find it on the cheap, I'm just Ten. truly look at that. That is, can you quote? That's a great cover. Wow. Hmm. Oh, got a signature on that one. It is. Chan. Ernie Chan, 1981. Yeah, Ernie Chan. All right. I know Ernie Chan and John Buscema, you know, and of course the greats, right? Barry Windsor Smith. 18. Cool. These are all cool. I mean, they're just awesome. Wow. A lot of these will go in the $2 claim sale. Oh, there's a uh, Kazar the Savage number four thrown in there. <laughs> are you finding these uh, bronze and copper are, are selling quicker than modern? Oh, definitely for yeah on my sales, absolutely. But that's also yeah, yeah the audience that watches my channels. So yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I do have um, the Kendall kid. He shows up uh, sometimes, and he he'll buy a lot of the modern stuff. Cool. Um, when he's there, number nineteen. Yeah, I'm gonna take my blog spot and I'm gonna just put it online probably in a week, even though it's a fraction of what I'm doing, and just to get the ball rolling. Cool. And another 18. Wow. <laughs> so that's three copies of 18. Yeah. And number 17. And I haven't, um, I actually haven't shown a Conan on my channel that hasn't sold. Yeah. Um, until just recently. Um, because I had bought a bunch of modern ones in, in at the Comics Den sale. And uh, some of those... Uh, I had multiple copies of, and so like each issue sold. There's number two again. I think um, it's because, um, but the uh, you know, so I, I did get some doubles that I got to keep, but yeah, but generally, if I see Conan's, I pick them up because I know they'll sell. Interest in Conan is renewed, I, I think, due in part to Titan, you know, Titan Comics. Oh, actually, yeah, that, that yeah, current one, people are raving. Too. I haven't read it, but I've, I've looked through some of it. And There's another, another copy. Again. Oh, I might show up, man. So I definitely got doubles uh, of quite a few of these. Hey, Number Jacob, 11, thanks that's for coming, good. man. <laughs> What's up, brother? So Zodiac is ask, asking, do you combine ship? Number 14. Um, Rob. Every book on my sale is $2 each. There is, uh, there is no shipping. So there is no shipping and he so, does that on Saturdays. <laughs> yeah. I guess the answer is yeah. uh, number eight. And I, I started my uh, blog spot, which will probably air in a week. Number four. Because of what Rob has done here. What the what Rob has started. which It's beautiful. And see number 13. Yeah, who doesn't love that, man? I know you can't beat that. You're right. And I'll save the Absolutely. rest of them for if we do go another round. So cool. We'll be going another round. I plan on doing this um for till six today. <laughs> cool. See if, if see if I could burn everybody out. But I'm gonna uh throw uh Will on there now. Cool. And uh you know, Mike is still trying to get on, but he's having technical difficulties. Right. Greetings, man. Thanks for being here, Will. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So, you know, I bring the modern stuff <laughs> to the party. 
So we'll get into that the next round, though. I love your uh, I love your take on modern on modern books that are coming out because I think you got good taste. I've been watching your show since the beginning. So thank you, thank you. Um, what I do have here is a long box that's been sitting in my office for a while, and I'm not quite sure what's in it. So I'm just going to dig in here somewhere in the center, and we'll see what I pull out. Oh, these have hey, Friar. Uh, Friar's asking if I'm looking to trade or sell. Trade all the way, dude. I'm not selling. And I'm going to have both uh, modern and, uh, you know, copper and bronze. <laughs> All right. So Mike, wish you could get on here. I don't know what the technical difficulty is, brother. <laughs> I need my Captain Easy on. All right. Here we go. Pulled out some Spidey, so we'll get to that, too. All right. Uh, here we go. This is fun. Some 90s goodness. We got the pit number one. Nice. Ripping first issue. So some good 90s. Ah. This is a 15 center. See, I have some old comics. This is a uh, part of the Archie series. This is Laugh 227. Cool. It's cool. center. Yeah, Rob, you like those, right? Yeah, I'm. I, I have an appreciation for them. I, I I started picking them up just because they were old. Um, and a lot of times I get a real kick out of the ads and stuff that are in them. There, there's some really strange ads in the Archie comics sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, Friar Tuck, thank you. Um, he says, post my want list as well. Okay. And um, and he says, when you get your blog spot up and running, thank you, brother. Um, I'm going to have my, ent my entire freaking – I'm going to have my entire freaking collection on there, and people can see what I'm going for and what they need and stuff like that. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be quite a quite a list. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. That's, it's got, i got to keep it fun. There you go. This is actually a pretty cool cover. I think I, this was a cover by. This is another 90s book. This is the Savage Namor. Oh, well, yeah. Namor, number 26. Jay Lee. Yeah, I yep. think that is Jay. Yep, yeah, Jay Lee. Beautiful, man. Beautiful cover. Early Jay Lee cover. Yeah. His, his, uh, his aesthetic has kind of changed a little bit over the years. It's a little bit more refined. Hmm. But it's, it's cool. Um, here's a ASM. 381 with the Hulk on the cover. This is a Bagley cover. Cool. I remember that actually. Well, when I had all of amazing from like the 70s to, to 2018 or something, I had everything. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Those books go for a decent price. This is a uh, Sal Buscema cover. This is the Spectacular Spider Man uh, 186. 188. I think JMD Matias is the writer on that too, as well. Maybe. Yeah, pro probably. Um, they don't put that. They didn't put that information on the uh, cover back in the. <laughs> in those no. Days. This is the uh, most. This is from the most loved Spidey run ever. Um, this is the Amazing Spider-Man number one from uh, when Nick Spencer wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> they call him Thick Spencer because they're. Stacks would be hanging out on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> well, you stuck. The, you stuck with it, right? I did. I did. I have. Yeah. I have the entire run from one. This is actually the B cover. This is the A cover right here. <laughs> okay, cool. I remember the A cover. I had that. Yeah. So the the A cover may actually be. Uh, and just I had two of them in here for some reason. Uh, maybe the only book that carries uh some value out of the series. People. Mm. Seem to pay a little bit more than a dollar for that one. Because there was the mystery. There was a new character or whatever, right? Right. Um, which took – the reveal of that character took about 50 – before we had the first full appearance, technically. It was about yeah. 50 years in. <laughs> a little decompressed there. <laughs> this is actually uh, pretty cool. I picked this up in a 50-cent bin. This is autographed by Bart Sears. This is a 1 in 30 variant. Nice. Um, I know it says $20 on there. <laughs> that is not how much I that pay. That's not what you pay. Yeah. That is not what, yeah. Basically, with some of my more expensive books, I'll take them out of the bags and boards they come into, and I'll put them into a new bag and board, or even yeah. sometimes mylar. Um, and then an older book will go in here. So Bart Sears autograph. <laughs> put it in this. No, one. I have yet to uh, buy a whole thing of mylar. You know, just do that. Yeah, they're they're cool. Um, they really, I think, when you put your book in there, especially if it's a book you want to show, it really emphasizes uh, yeah. the book. It makes the cover pop. Yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely. What's the price difference you think is uh, is it is it way greater when you buy it in bulk, the mylar? Mylar, yeah. I mean, what I've paid like anywhere between five and ten dollars for a regular bag of comics, and the mylar maybe closer to twenty, mm. fifteen, twenty dollars for some mylar. Mm. So, I mean, and that was uh, bulk. So, I think I probably got about two hundred. Um, mylar bag. Okay, twenty-ish bucks. So that's not too bad. It's not horrible. I don't know. Now it's been a while since I bought mylar, and right. you know, I'm not sure. You know, it's probably been three years, and I haven't used all those bags yet. I'm very just right. judicial with those books. You know, I really go through the books, and I'm like, if I'm putting it in mylar, it's got to yeah. be pristine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, mm. This is uh, one of uh, an early McFarlane cover um, coming up here. Um, Infinity Inc. Oh, yeah. Number 32. And you could see here, uh, it actually says McFarlane. And this was before, you know, he got his fancy signature. Right. Yeah. So. I think he got a start on Infinity and in, with DC, actually, before he went to Marvel. Right. I think, um, it, yeah. I think it correct, it was. Wasn't his first sure. book, but it was definitely his first like DC stuff. Greetings, Mike. Oh, Mike, you were in. He was in. He was in. <laughs> Are you still? Uh, yeah. We'll so, close. <laughs> so close. So close. Yet so right. far away. <laughs> Here's another Infinity cover here. Um, I'm not sure, but I think there was some McFarlane interiors on one of these what's infinity. his name mr bones was that the uh precursor to spawn or whatever right yes and it yep that is uh yeah oh, i had i have a i have a post-it back here i'm trying to read what it says <laughs> uh, i think it says number 13 first published dc comic so yeah that this is the first published mcfarland book here Cool. Um, yeah, he really fought to get in, into DC too. Yeah, According and then his first comic artwork was uh, I wrote it here too. Uh, Coyote, Coyote, uh, for Marvel. Sorry, for Marvel, his first was Coyote. Oh, what issue? I have a bunch of those. Uh, it's I think it says issue number thirty-two. Okay, yeah, I have the earlier issues. All right. Cool. So there you go. And I got uh, I got a couple more books. So McFarland, definitely worth uh, holding on to, grabbing. Yeah, so I got a cover and his first interiors. Uh, this is Superman number 10, 1987. You got Byrne and Kessel on this one. Just that, I find the 80s covers to, to tell a story. They're like really cool. Like the 80s, the covers that come out of the 70s, 80s. Me too. And even into the '90s, in some ways, they get more flashier than the late '90s. Yeah. The '80s and '70s, they they really, they really tell a story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, this is Action Comics, sixty center, five twenty seven. Jacob, Jacob says it's Coyote yeah. Eleven. Eleven. That probably yes. That sounds more correct. I might so have I'm, not, that. I'm not quite sure what my. my I might have one through ten. <laughs> Got to check my CLZ. Yeah, eleven's probably. This is actually a cool book. I found this in a in a fifty cent bin as well. This is Adventure Comics presents Black Orchid. Oh, that's beautiful. Number twenty. So, and then uh, we'll Brian end, we'll end up. <laughs> hey, Brian. Hello. We'll end up uh, this first round with a new Defenders book. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. And this is the last issue, the double size 152. Nope. So, and I, I, I really do like the artwork on those Defenders. Me too, man. Covers. I grew they up on those. <laughs> the last ones, yeah, those are really cool. Yeah, I so, love the Defenders and uh, Infinity Inc. Too, you got a lot of good books there. Yeah, you and Higgy talk about the. Uh, I got to read. I was checking Infinity. my list. I've got Coyote one through ten, and then it jumps to twelve. So, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Brian LCS, thanks for being here, brother. Um, you were one of the first guys to be nice to me on the internet. So thanks, brother. <laughs> Brian's a good guy. Yeah. 
He lives nearby, I think, or something. He's he's now in. Uh, he used to live by close to me. Um, oh, okay. He's now in uh, the Carolinas. Oh, okay. He's down south, but I'll see him uh, for Heroes Con. I'll be going to Heroes Con. Cool. Very soon. Yeah. Um, you want me to keep going, or unless uh, Rob wants to go, or yeah, yeah. you want to go, Rob? Um, I can. Well, keep I, it won't be for very long. I've only got a few of the Conan books left, and okay, I'll, we'll keep Will on, and then I'll jump in there. All right. Okay. So I'll pull a few more. These are more. I think these are more modern. Let me let me dig. I like them. modern too because I I think that uh, you really uh, when you were reviewing the newer books and and educating all uh, the guys right. who are not you know picking up the new books. I think that's a good <laughs> thing actually. Oh yeah, and I'll, I'll get to my. Uh, I'll actually get to the new comic book day hall. Yeah. In the next round, right? You said we'll be here for a while. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is Star Wars The High Republic, and this is technically right now the earliest period of Star Wars, you know, being written in yes. comics. Also. So you got Marshawn Rowe on, on the cover. He's the leader of the Nihil, which are kind of causing issues right. for all sides. You know, mm -hmm. they've, they've blown up the Starlight Beacon for the uh, Jedi, their, their big uh, outer rim space station. So a lot of, a lot of stuff going now. This is yeah. from the Earth. I was uh, reading Star Wars for a while, but um, I stopped for some reason. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a lot of Star Wars books. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Zodiac, I do uh, Black Orchid for 50 cents. That was that was a nice find. I get lucky sometimes in the 50 cent bins. Oh, um, yeah. They, what happens is. Um, it's a, it's a comic shop that has a, a ton. It's uh, one of the bigger ones on Long Island. Um, it's got a ton of back stock already. So they'll, you know, you'll sell, they'll, they'll get a lot, you know, they'll buy a lot or whatever, and they'll they'll scan through for like really what are known key issues. Yeah. And then um, if it's a mega, you know, like key, obviously it comes out regardless of, of um, condition. If it's like sort of key, but it's like in very fine or, or, or fine condition. They'll, they'll throw it back in the box. Um, mm. So I found a couple of books that way. And then sometimes they just miss a book. Wow. So, so you know, the yeah. early book. And then the they world. honor the price. See, yeah. one LCS of mine, well, the, none of these are LCSs to me because I got to drive 40 minutes to get it to there, you know. But <laughs> um, it's a non LCS. But one of them, they price at the counter. And I'm like, oh, man, it just takes the fun out. It, yeah, these you guys, know? the entire uh, so they have a warehouse. So there's yeah. the LCS brick and mortar like regular sh uh, store where you can go and the fifty cent bin. They have a, like four or five long boxes there with fifty cent books, but for the most part, it's just the store with all the new issues and the back bin issues, and they're right. all kind of priced accordingly. Yeah, and then they have a warehouse where they throw all the overstock in, and it's just free for all. You dig through it. Awesome. Fifty cents a book. Uh, they do have some X Men books, uh, uncanny like Chris Claremont stuff. Yeah, they throw that in there. That is actually not fifty cents. They tend to charge uh, about two, two fifty to five dollars for those books, which wow. I get it. And yeah. then in the back, they kind of have like the old um, indie, but like in, remember like when indie was like risque, like yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So they have that stuff in the back, like behind a wall. <laughs> you can go buy that stuff, and that stuff is also not fifty cents. It's usually priced anywhere from five to fifteen dollars because that's like the hard stuff to find. Right. But some of the books that have been found in there, um, according to the owner, I, I haven't I haven't ventured into that area. Uh, sell on eBay for like fifty hundred dollars because they're just these rare, these rare books. So <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Manny Emmanuel? Thank you for being here. But um, yeah, so it's actually really cool, and I've I've gotten to um, know the owner so well that he doesn't even count my stacks anymore. I just go up, and he's like, "How many books you got?" And I'm That's like, "Excellent." You know, he's a good customer. Yeah, I could just throw him a number, and yeah, he trusts me. So, <laughs> but uh, last time I went, I had like a uh, hundred and four books, um, which should have been uh, fifty two dollars, but he was like, "If you get a hundred books, it's actually forty bucks." Wow. And so it should have been like $42, but he was like, you know what, just give me 40 bucks straight. I want a warehouse like that by where I live. 
Yeah, it's yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'd no. be in there all the time, though. My wife, <laughs> yeah. Drive my so I wife paid nuts. I paid forty bucks for a uh, hundred and, and and four books or whatever. Um, if I were to fill a short box while I was there, I believe a short box was uh, forty forty eight dollars or something like that. So I was mm. like, for eight more dollars, I could have got like fifty more comics. Or something wow, like that. that's amazing. So, um, I I just yeah, but I, I was running out of time and I was tired, so. That's cool, but so uh, I, got a, yeah. I got a little stack. Should, are you in? What What are you What are you showing right now? Um, oh, I just I had some more books, but you can, okay. You can show your stack. Okay, I'll I'll show this little one. Then I'll, yeah. I'll either go back to Rob and Will. Appreciate you guys being here. Yeah, no problem. Cool, you guys. So um, these I don't have bags and boards, and so I don't have to worry about the glare so much. You know, I'll do this thing. I get this. I guess that's a better way to do it. Present these. But we got um, 1980, Ghost Rider, 44. Ooh. Pretty cool. Some nice, yeah. And I got these uh, for like a, a buck and a quarter. So all the ones I'm going to show now. Um, we'll do another Ghost Rider, 1980. I love it. Yeah, that's what cool. a cool cover, man. This is before my time. I, I when I was a kid, um, well, actually, it's not because I was indoctrinated into Spider Man. I think when I, <laughs> when I was in the late seventies, I could barely remember. I have these uh, vague imageries of uh, Spidey, but I didn't really get into comics till like the nineteen eighty three. Look at this, oh, the original stained glass cover. <laughs> wow. Ghost Rider. Number 80, The Eater of Souls. I mean, who doesn't love that? Wow. Do you see um, they just they just did a comic uh last week or two weeks ago where the spirit of vengeance is now a new character? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so they're, they're always trying the new idea. Do you like it? Yeah. Um I I obviously uh no, obviously. Um I like the Ghost Rider. Um I didn't actually um I didn't like the new issue that much. I didn't like how they they did it, but we'll Betrayed see. Him. It's a lot of it's a, it's a lot of backstory to it, so we'll see. So where it it's goes. a brand new character. It's not uh, Danny or Johnny, right, Blaze? So Johnny actually uh, gives up. Well, doesn't really give up. He's it's taken, I guess, taken away from. It's it's unclear whether he gives it up or it's taken away from him by Mephisto. But um, basically, the spirit of vengeance leaves his body, leaves Johnny Blaze's body. And heads towards a new, uh, a new person. Budansky, Budansky killed the uh, the Ghost Rider run. Uh, Legion of Comics, thanks for being here. Really appreciate you. Okay, so um, here's Howard the Duck. This is a double for me. Number two. I'll, uh, get rid of the ticker. So this will go in the doubles. Nice. I love the uh, space turnip. <laughs> Looking forward to reading these issues, especially ones with Gene Colan inside. Um, got these Infinity Wars from uh, 1992. That's a cool series, too. Yeah, some uh, awesome Ooh, yeah. gold action. The Infinity War. You gotta love it. And I think does this come out too? No, that doesn't come out. But yeah, I guess these were pricey when the uh, MCU was uh, was really good, right? With Thanos and all that. But now you can get these. So never despair when a comic is um, seems like it's out of your range. Well, some are always going to be pretty pricey, <laughs> okay? But um, some do come back down. Is that him? Whatever from Warlock or whatever, could be. I don't remember reading the Infinity War. But yeah, awesome. Uh, More gatefold. Yeah, I love, these, I love these gatefolds. Pretty dang cool. Okay, so front we got. Um, we got a 1980 something a news 
it looks like a newsstand. Uh, Iron Fist, number five. But these uh, newsstands are, you know, ease, they're good. They're not hard to find, as we talked about before at, in this time. Um, but this is in good condition. So, yeah, you got to love that. Yeah, it looks like it's in beautiful condition for, for what yeah. it is. We got, a lot of the... Uh, Go ahead. A lot of the martial arts types books like Iron Fist and those are hard to find in good shape because the, the people that I think liked them, they weren't necessarily comic book collectors. They just bought them to read them. Mm -hmm. War of the Worlds. Is this featuring Kill Raven? Or? That's pretty cool. Cool art. Yeah, I'm trying to, I don't know what. Although, look, this happens in 2019, you guys. Look out. <laughs> New Year's Nightmare. Pretty cool. Yeah, so these are all one haul that I recently picked up. Amazing Adventures. Yeah, Kill Raven, star, starring Kill Raven. Have you read these, Rob? I've seen a couple of them. I haven't. I haven't really read through the series because it's it's pretty much a serial that you have to read. Oh, you know, yeah, as an ongoing thing, I believe. Wow. Okay. Yeah, a couple more of those. Pretty cool art, right? Yeah, it's awesome. And, and I, I know Kill Raven definitely has always had his fans, so there's, it's probably a pretty good read. Yeah, I didn't know he never was been smarter. a character that they've, you know, made mainstream or anything. But uh, I didn't know he starred in in this War of the Worlds. Pretty creepy. Okay. Um. What do we got here? We got Submariner from the 70s. This is a nice shape, too. Look at that nice yellow. Mm. I mean, I would say that this is fine, very fine copy. Got yeah. a little I mean, I see books like that, and I just, it's like, how do they stay in such nice shape, you know? <laughs> People just put them away and forget, you know? <laughs> or they just keep them in a good condition. Yeah. Um, Stingray looks cool. And I'll show another Submariner, and I'll turn it over to Rob. The Manfish. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> All right, Rob, you, you want to go next, buddy? Sure. Inside here. Awesome. I don't know if I could just do this. Nope. I gotta do this. There we go. All right, cheap comic collector. All right, awesome. Uh yeah, so I'm I'll finish up this box of Conan that I got off of whatnot. Um King Conan's some of these are we've already seen, but uh it's the whole box. So here's number three. Okay, cool. Uh, kind of hard to see the details there on my the way it's showing up on my screen anyway. But uh and number five. That one looks familiar to me. I, I might, might have, have just shown one. it. I don't know. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> if there was more than one. This is number six. And I know I just showed this one a little bit ago. Yeah. Legion of Comics is making uh, commentary on uh Ghost Rider. That the spirit was uh, tired of Johnny also fighting back, wanted a more free spirit to drive. Huh. Yeah, but there was like some tunnel involved. He drove to, through some tunnel that in the past, I guess, also released the spirit. So it's unclear who was actually getting rid of who. My sister Jamie saying hi to everyone. Big thumbs up to my sister Jamie from Connecticut, hey, Jamie. Oh, Massachusetts. Yeah, cool. Hello, Jamie. There's number 17. I don't think I showed that one. No, I actually have. I said before I didn't have any of these, but I think I have a couple. The other and one. Number 19. 
And since I'm showing them this week, um, these will be in my climb cell on Saturday because even though they haven't hit, I haven't shown them on my channel. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, it's going to get too confusing for me on what I've shown and what I haven't shown and where. It's yeah, at. you have a you have a meticulous <laughs> schedule, right, with your videos, the way you drop them and stuff. And uh, then I just grabbed some some other random books out of the uh, that brown sail box back there. I don't know what's here, so. I'll just show these real quick. Yo, Jim, what's going on, brother? I can't hear you. I can't <laughs> hear you, Aaron. Higgy, higgy, higgy. Sorry, can you hear us? <laughs> Hello. Hmm. That's tough. Oh, that's too bad, man. There's something going on here. <laughs> Turn the volume up. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope they get those worked out. Um, yeah, so here's fantastic. Thank you, Pop. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully, uh, the audio. Well, look, wait a second. Oh, I just un I'm. Are you on now? There you go. It shows his mic is being off. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to freaking unmic uh, unmute it. Yeah, it won't unmute. Weird. Huh. Oh, they were muting themselves, Higgy. <laughs> it's all good, brother. Thank you for being here. You were uh, muting yourself, my, my friend. Six Force number 11. All right. So we're back with, uh, yeah, with Rob here. I'm trying to keep the show going. <laughs> <laughs> got technical difficulties. It's actually a pretty cool cover for, for that series. I'm not familiar, real familiar with this series, but uh, I like that cover with the panther on there. We got already some enchanting Higgy, Higgy. Number two. <laughs> That's a great show, you guys. Higgy Pop. Uh, Fallen Angels, number 15. On another series that I know nothing about. And this looks like a cool series, too, but uh, I haven't checked it out yet. It's Fade Out. This is number six from Image. Cool. Number eight. They got some really cool covers just that are just different, you know? Right. Uh, let's see, Aquaman annual number two with Wonder Woman. There's a team up you don't see very often. <laughs> Aquaman and the others number three. Um, that was actually a pretty interesting uh series. The one, the part of it that I read, uh, because they did they didn't focus so much on Aquaman, it was basically a bunch of new characters that yet yeah, didn't really know so there's a lot for them to explore hmm. uh avengers number 30 from 2014 uh, avengers 34.1 which i don't know about you guys but i hate the point system <laughs> <laughs> Of numbering comics. <laughs> Why can't it just be number 35? I actually you know? read all those uh, Avengers and New Avengers by Jonathan Hickman. They were pretty good. Um, Batwoman, number 30. So, yeah, these are just a bunch of more modern stuff that you know, I had gotten in, in one collection or another. Mm -hmm. Number 31. And let's see, 33. And 34. And the other one is kind of gross, so I'm not gonna show that one. <laughs> ah, it's gross. Huh? Is it risque or is it just? Uh... And, yeah, the inside is definitely. Um, it, it's yeah, it's just not it's something you're provocative. Want to show. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, so um, we'll go with Will here. Yep. Uh, you ready, Will? I am ready. All right. All right. So. I've got the bags of boards ready because uh, we're going to break out the new comics. <laughs> okay. Today's comics. Um, so was that the extent of Higgy's appearance? Is he just like going around hitting all the channels? <laughs> hey, at least he made an appearance. I can't even get on. Came in, got the crowd hyped. And then, uh, Wait, there's Higgy. <laughs> all right, you good? Sorry, Aaron. I can't oh, hear it's you. All right, man. I can't hear nobody. Oh no! There he is. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, brother. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Hawk Woman's with you, right? Chat. You can write what you want to write. Mm -hmm. Just tell me you can't hear anything. Yeah. We could hear you now. 
Yeah, we hear them. That for some reason they, they can hear, hear us. us. Still can't hear us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's weird oh, that that's it would only bad. go one way. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wait, we could hear you though. That's the good news. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, you can go. Out. <laughs> yeah. <so>. Oops. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. All right. Pulling out some new stuff. There we go. Uh, we picked up God's Number Five by Jonathan Hickman and cool. Valeria Shetty. Really cool. Well, Valeria Shetty is a really good artist. I've been enjoying it. You know, we're just wondering what the point is, but, you know. Right. <laughs> right. I think. I think part of it is they want to build on magic and science. You know, science has rules. Right. I think there's rules to stuff. I think they want to build on the, the magic aspect and how yeah. the mystical stuff also operates by a set of rules. I, I, that's that's my so far. That's all I've gotten out of this book, besides it just being a pretty cool story. Yeah, but, it is. It's definitely done well. It's that Hickman right. style leaves a lot to the imagination. Yet yeah, it's it's a little heady at times, but it's cool the way they describe the abstracts and and uh, a lot of the different characters. It's right. Cool. Um, so that was five, and then this is six. So five was last last month, and six was this this week's cover. I think I read one through four so far. Yeah, me too. Four kind of le leaves you going, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping five and six kind of – I got both of them. I hope it clears it up, and if it doesn't, uh, we move on. <laughs> Do you know how long it is going to go on for? Um, as far as I know, it was listed as an ongoing, but, you know, at, at very – if it's a maxi series, it'll go 12 issues. Mm -hmm. um, if it was a mini, it probably would have ended already. But I think it's just ongoing till Hickman decides he's done and moves on to a new new project. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, what else we got? We got Duke number four. And you got um oh, what's her name? Baroness. Baroness in the uh in the blade right there. You know, yeah. Duke's hanging upside down. I this is that. actually mm -hmm. yeah, this is actually cover B. So okay. I picked up cover B because I thought it was just cool. Right. It's a cool one. Yeah, but I'm hearing good things about the GI Joe, like we said last week. But even now, this new Duke got a good review. I get my reviews from Rock and Robbie, so you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't always agree with him, but I like his I like his presentation. <laughs> this is a um, this is a one shot. I actually didn't order it. But my local comic shop guy got it to, got it for me because I've been collecting all the local man stuff. So this is local man bad girls. Okay. So you know it, this plays on a the hero in this basically grew up on a on a team in the '90s and now he's uh, he's been blacklisted by the government. Kind of lives back at home with his parents. You know, um, can't resort to vigilanteism, so he wears like a ski mask when he goes out. You know, so huh. he's got a dog he takes out with him. It's it's funny. Um, so he can't resort to vigilanteism. Like, what is that? What do you mean? He can't. So he was on like a team, and then he gets um, he gets thrown off the 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 hero. You know, the, the, like let's say he was on the Avengers, and he gets thrown right. off. Okay. And the government's like, you can't practice being a hero ever again. Right. So so now he's in this town, and a lot of stuff's going down in his town, and he's like, well, you know, it's not even like he wants to be a hero. He's like he's reluctantly pulled back into it. Right. But they're like, you can't do anything. You can't be a hero. So he just wears a ski mask to get away with it. Oh, I see. So yeah, his I, his superhero identity he can't use. Right. Yeah. So he's just hiding it. Um, but his 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 uh, Crossjack is the name of the character. He's basically like a shield welding guy. I could throw it around. You know. Cool. Um, he's 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 like a bulls a cross between Bullseye and like Captain America. Not okay. quite as strong as Captain America. Not quite as deadly as Bullseye. But he's still a pretty good character. So this one shot, I don't even know what it technically is. Um, it's not a swimsuit issue, but it does <laughs> follow <laughs> this one character. And um, it actually follows a couple of the female characters, and they're just in here, and it's kind of telling their story. So it's, I guess it's seeing it from another perspective, mm -hmm. the story. But Local Man's actually a really cool book. Um, 
I would check it out. It's it's fun. If you want to see like a 90 superhero down on his luck living with right. his parents. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of and they do reference a lot of the heroes, uh, a lot of the image um, hero teams from back then. Okay. So, so you know, um, like Brigade and, and Prophet and all those those people would have existed in this world. Right, right. Cool. Yeah. Um, so Miles hits his Legacy 300 issue. Now, did you read that? I have not. I haven't read any of my books today. It's a pretty big. Read... It's a pretty big book. Huh? Yeah, it's 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 a little thick, thick yeah. guy. Uh, it it should be nine dollar price tag on this book. Wow. Yeah, ninety nine. Uh, this is a variant cover. So usually when a milestone is hit, they do these variant covers. And I'm just trying to remember who did this one. Uh, I think it's uh it's a uh, Garson. He does like these. Covers where if you look deeper, you see the characters in it, right? So you have the Miles symbol, yeah. and if you really look at the cover, you start to see the faces in there. And yeah, so for each each anniversary, anytime there's like a big legacy issue, uh, Garson has done a cover for them. Um, not just Spider Man; he's done a couple of them for other guys, Thor, and oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember the Amazing Spider Man. Um, was it eight hundred? Or 800. Yeah, 700 too, right? There was a 700 one or something. I don't know. Um, there might have been one on 700. I'm not sure how far back they go with these covers. Deadpool has one of these covers, though. Yeah. So they do exist. I've kind of fallen behind on this detective run. Um, yeah, same here. It is pretty good with Ron V. The art in it's pretty good. Um, I'm good. I actually pulled it from the beginning to read it from the beginning. Again? Yeah, it's kind of a dreamscape. Yeah. Um, it does switch gears at one point because Batman. Um, I don't want to give away too much of the book if people haven't read it, but Batman kind of loses his mental faculties, so he can't. He's not right. really performing, you know, like Batman should. Right. And he gets uh basically gets captured by the bad guys, and then there's kind of a um. He's struggling with Barbados, right? Or is that the name? Or... Yeah, Barbados is there. Um, there's a, a group of of people who come over called the Orgums, and they have they had some uh, relations to Raz Raish or Raz Al Ghul. Yeah, and so there's a lot of history between this and in this book, and basically, Batman's mental aspects get in, in, infected. Um. Forget the name. Oh, kitty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. Um, basi so basically, he's he's battling his own internal thoughts, Batman, at one point. But he also gets captured by these or by the Orgums, and they're basically going to execute him in public. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. So while that's happening, <laughs> the, where I left off is like Commissioner Gordon and Selena Kyle, Catwoman are basically getting together a team because they're going to do like a heist. It becomes like a heist comic, you know, like Ocean's Eleven style where they're like introducing each character and each character's like abilities and how they're going to use everybody's ability to break Batman out of jail. Yeah. Um, it's a, actually, it was, it, it was fun. And then I reading just caught up with me and I, <laughs> I, uh, I lost track of Batman detective. So I have to continue on with that one. Yeah. Like I said, I had to start over um, because I was reading a lot of dif different other stuff, and I fell behind. And right. I want I, with modern books, I do like reading them consecutively. It's it stays with me longer. Um, it does. Stories are decompressed and whatnot. It does. It does help. Like I have a ton of. Um, this is one series called Philadelphia. Yeah, I remember and, that. Um, yeah, I'm just. I just want to read it all in one one big shot. So I've been saving it for a little a little bit. They are made for the trade, you know. Yeah, a lot of these are basically that. That's you know they do five five issue runs and then put them in a trade. Like as soon as that like fifth issue drops, like two weeks later, there's already a uh, a trade coming out for it. Yeah. Um, Hulk number ten. Hulk is a. Uh, it's become quite the horror book, you know. So when Al Ewing was do doing it, was more of like a body dysmorphia, a body horror book. Now it's more of just like a Things there's scary things in the world and ghouls yeah. and you know they're trying to capture the Hulk, but yeah, 
it's actually it's a really good it's a really good book. I, I'm really enjoying the Hulk. It's fun, and this I hear it's good. the art the artist that you know it's not Nick Klein all the time, unfortunately, right? Right. So this guy Earls has kind of um, a similar aesthetic. He's just not Nick Klein. So. Right. Yeah. But, but it doesn't distract from issue to issue. Um, you know what? The writing is actually so uniformed that it doesn't really pull me out all the time. Cool. So it's it's actually not it's not a it's not a horrible thing. I'm I'm sure Nick Klein just needs a break every once in a while to catch up on things. Right, right. So uh Ultimate Spider-Man number three. Nice. I like right. Ultimate Spider-Man, the new series. So you have the first appearance of the ultimate bullseye in this book. Okay, and, cool. Yeah, and you have the Green Goblin and Spidey teaming up. There's a couple of theories as to who the Green Goblin is because his uh, his or her identity hasn't been revealed yet. So their identity hasn't been revealed yet. So right, we'll see. There's there's some variant covers that have um, this universe is Gwen Stacy is still alive and uh, she tends to wear a lot of um, purple. Huh. And, and then Norman Osborn wears a lot of green. So huh. there's there's a lot of uh, debate over who's the actual Green Goblin. Uh, as if we needed a new Spider-Verse character. <laughs> it's like you pick these up to... anyway, huh? So, yeah, I mean, I, I've just been picking them up. Um, I think they're actually on my pull, but they come out like every few months. So it's not like they're weekly. If they were weekly, I'd probably just pull them off the pull. Yeah, they were doing that weekly for a while. For a little bit, yeah. Now they're just every every so often. But this is Edge of Spider Verse Spooky Man. It's a cool cover. So yeah, that's the new the new character coming out of this one is the Spooky Man. First appearance. First appearance. <laughs> Pretty Venom like, but he's cool. Who? Uh, like two more of today's polls, and then we're done. We got. Okay. Uh, if you're a Spawn fan, you got Sam and Twitch case files. So this is part of that new Spawn universe book. Nice. You spawn you, so there's a couple of new books coming out. So and which kind of propped up sales of Spawn number one. So cool. Yeah, and then here's the last one. This is the one in ten of the new book Feral, done by the same creative team that did Stray Dogs. Oh yeah, I heard good things about that. Yeah. Well, so, made the pick of the week for uh, Robbie there. Yeah. So I picked this up. Uh, I think I paid. It says eight dollars. I get twenty percent off at my. Ooh. So I think I paid six bucks because I have a, I buy enough. I have enough things on my pull. So my mm. LCS, if you have, uh, I think fifteen or more comics on your pull list, you get twenty percent off. Cool, but so, that was an eight dollar book, huh? Eight dollars, yeah, for the one in ten. So it's it's our, it was already priced below. Oh, one in ten. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's not it's not an eight dollar. This isn't the so this is basically the A cover except the A cover has trade. So it would have right. said Earl. You know, by um, Trish Forstner and um, uh, who's the other guy on this book? The writer, uh, Trish Forstner and uh, Tim Tim Tony Fleeks. Tony Fleeks. I had to look back at uh, my uh, local man. Also has the same guy who writes Strays does the local man. Yeah, I figured you know oh, that, no. this is this is not the same thing as the straight you know dogs, right? That's what it's called, or um, it's called feral. Uh, that one. Yeah. So it's it basically instead of dogs, they did cats. Right. Right. But I haven't read it yet, so when I get to reading it, you know, we're, we're done with the show. I'm going to pick it up and read it. Cool. Uh, I'll have a little bit more information on that book. So a couple of new books this week. Awesome. But that's all. Yeah, that's all for the new, the new stuff. The bag's empty. Oh, there was a receipt. But other than that, the bag's empty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rob, did you want to jump back in there? You got some other books? Uh, yeah, I got, I, can't, I got enough for one more round. I don't know how much. Uh, okay. We're gonna do, but right. it'll be short. Well, we but... can come back to you. What's up? Can we come back to you? You can, or I can keep going. I got, I got plenty more modern stuff. <laughs> okay, cool. We'll we'll take a break and go to uh, Rob, and then I'll do it, and then we'll come back to you. All right. Cool. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah. So I was sitting here looking, and I was like, okay, what's within reach for another round? Right. And uh, um, 
Yeah, earlier today I finally hit 400 subscribers. Yay. Hey, congratulations, <laughs> buddy. All right. Yeah. It's yeah. been a long time, man. It's been like three months since we hit 300. So, you know, after, yeah, after, you're, you're after going right like this there. for so long, it was just like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the algorithm's so, kind of strange. Uh, but, you know, if you watch my channel, you know I was going to do some giveaways uh, as soon as I hit 400. So these are what's being given away this Saturday on the claim sale. Excellent. Um, you do have to watch to win. So right. uh, be there or lose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're giving away the first Superpowers miniseries. Uh, so there's number one. Awesome. Cool. Uh, Zodiac says mm -hmm. there'll be 401 today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it already is, actually. It went for, it jumped from 399 to 401. So Cool. Three. Superpower is awesome. I never read it. And, and I just realized I haven't actually read this. So I'm going to have to read this tonight so I can give it away on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, squeeze that in. And number five. And then we're also giving away the uh, Golden Age Elseworlds series. So let me make sure I'm showing them in order here. There's number one. And uh, this is a really good. Uh, Earth Two story. If you haven't read it, it's it's. Uh, no, I, I like haven't. those characters. I heard about that though. Um, there's number two, and it's it's not continuity because it's you know it changes a few, couple characters. But uh, oh, hold on. Hopefully that's the bag that looks like that, and not the cup, not the comic. <laughs> I don't want to come out. Well, that might be somewhat damaged. I didn't realize that. Oh, well. There's number three. It's got like a bubbly cover. I don't know if it's supposed uh, to be like that or not. Huh. The, the front looks Slide. good, though. Can I see that again? Yeah, it, well, it looks good on camera. I, it looks good on my <laughs> camera, too, but it's in person, it's very strange. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> and then... Where's number four? There it is. Number four. Got the uh, golden cover. Cool. Nice. Are those variant covers or do they come in that way? I thought that these were just normal covers, but then I saw the other day I was watching a video and somebody was talking about the golden cover on the Golden Age, making yeah. it sound like it was special. So I'm not positive. Huh. I'm not sure. Thank you, Zodiac. He subbed you up. Yeah. So awesome. It's Thanks for 402 unless it takes time. Well, I, you know, I checked before the show started, but uh, but thank you for subscribing. I need all the subscribers I can get. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you're doing so, yeah, those service. are going to be giving away Saturday. Um, hopefully, you know, nobody will be too disappointed in this cover that looks weird. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm it's sure free, so. Not, yeah. I'm sure it's not that bad. It's I've never seen one like it this before. <laughs> But anyway, um, so yeah, we got that going on. Those are going to be given away Saturday. We got a lot of books to go through, and cool. And uh, nice. yeah, stuff are going. Oh, and I have a confession to make too. Uh oh. I bought one comic book for over eighteen dollars. What? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, man! I think that's a great thing. What'd you get? <laughs> Wow. I was on whatnot, right? And I was buying a bunch of cheap books. They're like a dollar a piece. Great books, you know, some old Harveys, some old Charlton's, a really nice mix of old stuff. Yeah. And there's only like five people watching the guys selling them. And uh, so this guy comes in to the chat and and he, 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 but he does have more expensive books listed in his, uh, you'll buy it now listings which you can right. if you haven't done whatnot there's a like a sidebar that you can click on and see what people have listed for sale and so this guy talked him into running amazing spider-man 126 as an auction and the guy's got like a 60 dollar price tag on it and he starts it at 15 dollars and i'm like you know, I, I, I can't let this guy steal this book, you know, right. th th and take advantage of this guy like this. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to bid him up to 20, 25 bucks, you know, wow. and then I'll let him have it. Yeah. And 
So he bid on, you know, I bid on the 15 as soon as it came up and he bid 16 and I bid 17 and then the guy dropped out. He just disappeared. (laughs) (laughs) So So with tax and shipping, it came out to like $18 and in change. It's and, an, uh, you said but an it's amazing supposed to be in really Spider-Man. good shape. I don't have it yet, so I can't show it. It's on its way. Uh, um, what what issue is it again? But, uh, um, what yeah, issue is it like, now? Oh, I got a book for 18 bucks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's okay. Hopefully we it's gotta, worth it. I mean, it's the one gotta, with the kangaroo pay on the cover. And, you know. We got to pay up once in a while, dude. It's all Our tech says I should be embarrassed, and I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> what, what issue was it again? 126. 126. Um, yeah, it's got it's like it's a it's got the kangaroo on the cover where he's kind of jumping. Yeah. Um I mean it's an iconic cover, you know, I have seen it a lot. And cool. uh I think I think it's the issue where uh Harry Osborne becomes the green goblin. If that's right, huh. I'm not sure. Um, well, he, I, th- I think third, I saw that in a listing because I was looking it up third. on eBay and stuff to see what it's selling for and all that kind of stuff, you know, because I was like, oh, my God, I spent 18 bucks. Friars <laughs> yeah. asking what year. Do you, do you remember what year? Probably the 70s, right? It was 70. uh, probably going to be like 72, early 70s. Yeah. 73. Yeah, I can. I, I'm on my laptop, so I can pull it up real quick. Uh Cool. I'll show a uh, yeah. little stack here Brian that I got. It's good that I have a bunch that are not in bags and boards, so I could they come up better. But yeah, are you done, Rob? Or um, do you have more to show? Yeah, I'm just I'm looking up the issue real quick here. <laughs> John Romita cover 126, November 1973 cover date. Oh, I think Will um, nailed it. Right? So yeah, first green. appearance of Harry Osborne as the Green Goblin. So, yeah, it's that's cool. Uh-huh. All right, 1982, Doctor Strange, 52. Yeah, once again, awesome cover. I love psychedelic magic, you know, magical covers and stuff like that. Pretty cool. Um, I don't know what year this is. Strange Tales 174 featuring Gollum hmm. by Marvel Comics. Yeah, so for a buck 25, I think I did each. I, I think I did all right. These are these are like um high to mid grade, too. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, he tells you about looking at them. Star Trek number one. You the, motion, the cover, I'm amazed at how white that back cover is. <laughs> the motion picture, Star Trek number one. Pretty cool. Yeah, these are all super clean. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a huge Trekkie, but you know, mm. his pages are pretty white. Yeah, it's it's nice. And they have that 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 good that good smell, that good newsstand smell. You know, old comic. Um, 1980, uh, fantasy masterpieces, number seven, Oops. featuring the Silver Surfer, and who's he battling? The heir of Frankenstein. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, uh, good stuff here. Uh, John B- Buscema and Stan Lee actually wrote this. Yeah. Good stuff. A cool reprint. I love I love the reprints, you know, from the 70s, reprinting the 60s. I used to have this, and I, I did not have it in such nice shape here. Uh, 1979, what if uh, Sergeant Fury had fought World War II in outer space? Huh. I remember I had a ratty... Uh, um, version of this, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. 
Mother. So are they fighting? Actually, fighting Nazis in space? Then I, it doesn't look like <laughs> unless the Nazis transformed into some aliens or something. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, Daredevil one thirty four. Two against the chameleon. Huh. I love getting these old. You could still get like Silver Age Daredevil at a decent price nowadays too. Um, not that this is Silver Age, but it's close. I find Daredevil to be one of the more affordable runs. Even the original yeah. Daredevil one is still kind of within reach for certain people. You know, yeah, it's not totally. Like, uh, Nineteen seventy-eight Daredevil one fifty-five, when it, with an appearance of Black Widow, who we, <laughs> we know he teams up with for a while in his in his um, run, right? And then we got Cap. Very cool. Is it the beast in the back too? Is it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. So beast was probably part of the Avengers at this time. And yeah, looks pretty good. I always wanted that toy. <laughs> oh yeah. The energized Spider-Man thing. <laughs> Daredevil is consistent. I think all it did was go up a rope, but it looked really cool on the TV ad. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Like we say, Daredevil is like like as great as the other, like Spidey and stuff, but it's just right under the radar, you know? So uh, it's still out there on the cheap. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man number four. Shout out to... Uh, Emmanuel, Manny the Hobgoblin Collector. He, he might have all of these now. I used to have all of Spectacular Spider-Man 2, Volume 1. And someday I plan on having that. I do have the first appearance of uh, Cloak and Dagger, which is pretty cool. With some uh, Sal Bishema art. You guys remember the King Kong movie? On the Trade Center. Pretty cool. Yeah, you got to love this stuff, man. Except there's a lot more advertisements I noticed back in the day. <laughs> yeah, they went through a period where there was a lot of advertising. There was only like 16 pages of story or something like that at one, one point, I think. Uh, Here's no, yeah, still a 32 page comic. <laughs> well, they were probably making bank, you know, people were buying comics, plus they had their advertisers, so yeah. they were probably doing pretty good back in the day. Mobius or Morbius, I mean, shout out to Mike Easy Comic Reader, he loves his uh Morbius. Too bad you couldn't make it, man. Maybe you guys could still get on. I don't know what happened. Some technical difficulties today, you guys. He's almost on. It was so close. Yeah, he was. Maybe he gave up too soon. <laughs> pretty pretty cool uh, art within. You know, you sometimes complain, oh, comics aren't the way they used to be. You know, so what? There's so many of the older comics, you might as well just buy them. <laughs> you know? yep, that's why I got back into it, and I was just like, yeah. I still love comics. I just collect the old stuff. Yeah. 90% of it you've never seen anyway, so... Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there's so much stuff I haven't read that was my era, you know? Morbius and look at this. Look at that price little stamp there, though, huh? Is that a foul? Well, for a dollar twenty-five each, these are still worthy. So from what I understand, if the stamp is um, uh on the book and it's a newsstand it's kind of how they they figured out when it could be returned it needed to be returned back then yes and um if you get them graded companies like cgc usually don't detract from the grade for the the stamp so, oh okay yeah that makes sense yeah it was uh it was kind of an industry standard so this was uh just a comic that was thrown in in the 
I bought 200 comics from my friend Dave, you know, for 25 cents each. I took him out to lunch and, you know, all that stuff. So, Is he still a friend? I'm thrifty. <laughs> I'm not cheap. Right? <laughs> I don't do my friends like that. That's Plus, right. he got a lunch out of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was good seeing him. I haven't seen him in a long time. So, so yeah, it's in very good, you know, very good condition. But it's Star Wars 25. Nice. I got a bunch. They're all in bag and board just about. No, I got some. I got, I got some I can show over there. I've been I decided I should, I should take these out of the bags and boards before I show them live. And it just, uh, it's a better experience, I think, than the glary, the glariness. Um, Will, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Come on. All right. Oh, I left the little thing. Oh, sorry, you guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> left you guys on. You did. <laughs> Couldn't like sneak away to get get a snack. <laughs> <That sounds good. laughs> you were on the spot. All right. So uh, we got Daredevil. It's number uh, nine. Jed McKay actually did a really cool job on this and he's still doing a good job on this but um i, I took it out of the bag because the interior art on daredevil is just so cool you mean moon knight uh yeah what, what was i saying daredevil? yeah you're saying daredevil moon knight but, Excuse yeah me. jed mckay moon knight McKay. is rocking moon and rolling my my mind was still fixated on the daredevils you were pulling out so. okay it's cool <laughs> But yeah, no, it does a really good job. And this is this this issue. If you it's if you look, it's got that MC Escher feel going to it. But that's nice. the, the Midnight Mission that they use as their home base is actually like a living building. Wow. And so this issue was like right before, who kind of befriends the building and it becomes like their uh, their headquarters. Cool. But, and the the common thread behind all of Jed McKay's um moon night issues is that they they're always speaking to some kind of psychiatrist <laughs> or some kind of you know somebody's always analyzing them. yeah yeah but which works but again i'm going to show it this work. <laughs> yeah i just think the artwork that's come out of this moon night series is really cool yeah the um the first volume of the jed mckay I love it, and so far the second one is it's it's okay. I'm I'm not hating it. Yeah, it's it's still picking up steam because everybody's trying to figure out who the new who the new Moon Knight is, right? Right. So, yeah. Um, speaking of Daredevil, um, this is Devil's Reign, which was you know Daredevil's big event from. Oh yeah, uh, I remember that. Three years yeah. It's issue two. Yeah, I liked it. It's, it's Chip Sadarsky, and I think they forced an event on him, you know? Yeah, but Chip's a good writer. So. Yeah, I like him. He did. I actually like Chip's uh, run on Daredevil before he left. He was, he was Yeah, the first volume. They should have never had him, I, you know. Take I over guess, a second. <laughs> I guess the editorial got involved. You know, they get involved. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, here's Gecko. <laughs> Gecko ad. <laughs> Is a big one. Um, yeah, the interiors on this one aren't too bad. Yeah, but it's a it's an event comic, so we're always going to put some guy who does decent artwork. Yeah. And this one, this one is actually Mark Tichetta, who who was he was the uh, the main artist on the Daredevil runs. So Darcy. Yeah, he's Daredevil. great. Yeah, Tichetta. Tichetta. Yeah. Yeah. He that was their first volume together. Really cool. Really character driven. You know. Yeah, this is actually a book that I haven't read yet. Um, Land of the Living Gods. But this this is out of Aftershock. So every once in a while, I will pick up some indie books. And when I actually catch up on the, the regular reading, I'll try to, try to pick chop, up those. Chop and drop. Hello, man. Thank you for coming by and saying hi. Really appreciate it, brother. Chop in the house. What's up, Daniel? Yeah, chop in the house. This is uh, another amazing Spider-Man. You know, by now they, you know, Spencer is no longer on the book. <laughs> and this was during a period where I think like every issue or every two issues they actually swapped writers. So this is Kelly Thompson on this one. Okay. 
and this was right before Zeb Wells took over and they rebooted the whole the whole thing. Yeah. This was actually a big hype book, you know, or spec book, Black Panther number yeah. three. It's Tosin. Tosin uh, became a big character, and the issue. This is the second uh, second print uh, issue or cover A of issue three. Still to this day is you know on eBay for thirty to fifty dollars. Wow! It's crazy. And the character wow. really hasn't done much since you know they were introduced. But like this. I don't even know if I can find it, but the character in this book is like Tosin is not even, I don't know. He's like in the background talking to somebody <laughs> and somehow this book became a huge, huge money book. Let's see if I can find them. I'm not going to spend a long time looking for them, but let's see if I can. It's cool. No, I just took off a bunch of bags and boards, man. For uh, I, I want to show some Atlas comics next. I think nice. Yeah, oh, I can't find those. Up a little bit. Here's some uh, here's some Black Panther getting smacked across the uh, the map, and Storm is is still technically in this book. Yeah, she's on that page. Yeah, she's she's the estranged, you know, ex-wife. Yeah. Did you enjoy that? Um, you read a lot. I, I kind of didn't read the Black Panther um, and Storm stuff. You know? Yeah, I read the Ridley Black Panther, and then when they rebooted it, I kind of stopped reading it. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. Basically, the Black Panther has um, he creates like his own cell of like deep cover agents who aren't activated, but they're just like all over the world. Right, and right. you know, if he needs them, he just activates them. But they're basically like just implanted, you know, everywhere. And um, somebody who's in on or knows about them starts to take them out, uh, including like his best friend. So he basically, uh, and then during that same point, he gets deposed as king of Wakanda because they move on to a democracy. Right. Right. And so he's trying to figure out who's who's killing all his agents. He's got no power, and he's getting kicked out of his country. And he goes to the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, "Can you guys help me?" And they're like, "No, you're a jerk. You got all these spies on us." Like, yeah. you know. What's so uh, that? they hate their king. Yeah, so it's it's basically just Black Panther like working by himself, and like his people don't trust him anymore, and he's like, "Yeah." Oh. And then he much. finds out that the best friend who got killed, who was a secret agent is actually the guy who orchestrated the whole plot oh and he, yeah and he's trying to put he's trying to put um t'challa back on the throne right huh. and t'challa like fights it and he's like no the people chose this and that's kind of like how he works his way back into the good graces yeah sort of. of the people but at, at the end of the book he still gets exiled from wakanda because they're like if people will do this for you we don't want you here <laughs> so right. They basically exile him um, at the end of this this run of uh, Black Panther, and so the next ish, uh, the next arc of Black, of Black Panther, or the next volume, if you will, um, is kind of him trying to get back into Wakanda. Okay, so, but I like that. It's it's uh, very story driven. It's very uh, kind of true to the whole basis of the character. Instead of reinventing him just flat out like they do a lot of times with characters, you know, or rebooting right. with a new identity or a new version of the character or whatever. It's all story driven from his past. And that, that's cool. That's what comics should be. Right. And that was a really good, that volume was really good. The thing that lost me on the next volume was I would have liked to have seen him struggle outside of Wakanda longer, except like the next, you know, the next volume is just him trying to sneak back into Wakanda, you know, or trying to get back right. in. It's yeah. like, let right. him live in the outer world for a little bit, you know, let him yeah. see what that's like, you know, and then, and then try to get him back into Wakanda, but let's not return, try to return him back to where he was when we had such a good story, like pushing right. him out. Yeah. Yeah. So, but let's not erase the good we did with the story by just going back to the status quo. Yeah. Right. So that's that. what, yeah. So that's what kind of lost me with the next, next volume, but yeah, we'll see. I, th I don't think sales are actually very good on the ne on the next volume. I haven't read it to really break it down, yeah, yeah. but I'm I know not, that's how they lost lost me was like trying to 
rewind it. So, uh, yeah, I'm not reading modern uh, Marvel. Um, are you done for now? We can come back to you, or do you have a few more? Okay, let's do let's do this. I'll do like three or four more. Okay, uh, cool. we got the Avengers. Um, this one just kind of in introduces um, some like. Actually, this one is. It's like an alternate dimension. Doctor Doom, I think, comes out of this. This is all like Jason Aaron to run of the Avengers. I wasn't huge into it. Um, they did some cool things with the Death Locks. They introduced mm -hmm. a couple of different Death Locks. So yeah, I couldn't really get into Jason Aaron's Avengers. I dropped yeah. out. Yeah, some guys did like great. Like he was pretty good on Thor, and then oh, I loved it. Lot, the beginning of his Thor, especially. Yeah, that was a really good run. Uh, some more of that Amazing Spider-Man that everybody loves. But this is actually Jed McKay to, cool. uh, to go over for a little bit towards the end. Like, they got a bunch of really good writers um, towards the end. And, it, you know, it was all right. This was an interesting story regarding the matters of Oswald's body. And this is all about the assassination of JFK. And oh, yeah, I heard body. about that. Yeah. Yeah, it was, was a pretty probably... interesting, interesting read. And it kind of has... Um, you know, it's another uh, theory, uh, but like a fictional theory of, of the assassination of JFK. You know, right. If you have a chance, I would read it. It's five five issues. Not bad. Cool. Um, here's a really cool um, Catwoman cover. So, and um, I forget who did this cover. Uh, but I, I just like the cover. And here's Batman Detective. We'll end with these next two. Descent into Fear. This is actually a pretty cool cover. Yeah. And here's... This is actually... Um, Dan Mora. That's right. This is a Dan Mora cover. And Dan Mora, this is another detective. Dan Mora is one of my... Uh, one of my favorite artists he's just yeah, he's rocking it on world's finest right now and shazam and in other titles yeah he just does really good work and he does interiors and covers he's not somebody who just can't you know there's there's artists who like i can't do interiors because i just do yeah. covers yeah um they're a well-known name they just want to do covers now dan moore does a little bit of everything and uh i'll leave you off with this book because i i like this book i have a ton of these too <laughs> darker image number one I, th I might have even shown one of these off last week. Yeah, I think you did last time. Yeah, cool. And this is out of a totally different box. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So every time I see this, I pick these up. But uh, first Excellent. Blood Wolf and first Dead Blood, <laughs> according to my, wow. uh, my notes. Very cool. All right. Awesome. Well, I got, um, I'm going to show some that I got from my, uh, my friend here, Dave. And... Uh, I was happy to get this score. And I'll check this out, you guys. A Marvel movie special. Crawl number one. Ooh. Isn't that nice? That is that is cool. Yep. Really nice shape, it looks like. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. Well, he kept he, he took care of his stuff, you know. The inside's okay. The inside art's okay. Yeah, Brett uh, Blevins does the art, but I think this is earlier work of his. Pretty cool. Yeah, I, I actually watched that movie a month or so ago. Oh yeah, did yeah. it hold? Did it hold? It doesn't hold up real well. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very. Uh, I mean, it was okay, but it it's nothing. Uh, I don't know. It's very hammy acting, very heavy-handed acting in it. 1975, The Destructor, number three, by Atlas Comics. Pretty cool. That's hmm. cool. I, I know Metarog really enjoys it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Metarog uh, enjoys the Atlas uh, book. So we're going to be running through some Atlas here. And I actually scored some of those too recently. They're not here yet. They're on the they should cool. be coming Friday. <laughs> Here's the number one. Yeah, 
Here's number one of Cougar. A lot of a lot of early issues of these, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, they, I think I mean, the longest any of them went was for like four issues, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't I think know that's so. the that's the longest I've seen any of them. Yes, yeah, so I, I just love them because it's like discovering a whole brand of marvel comics that you never saw you know <laughs> yeah like this reminds you of a marvel comic right demon hunter yeah. da, da, da. very cool Number well i mean one. they were trying to go head to head to marvel so they hired all their artists i mean and stuff yeah. to work on the books it's just they I mean, want even the letters want... pages and the the editorial pages are set up almost exactly the same way as marvel the marvel comics were we want a little piece of the pie Pretty cool. You gotta love that cover. <laughs> okay, so 1990, uh, uh, number four, uh, Ford Fairline, uh, Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that these comics existed. Here's number three. There you go, a little seal of approval. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a lot of these square bound uh, Marvel Tales too. Uh, I never really owned these. I had the later ones, you know. Yeah, the early ones, the, those are the ones I like, the early ones where they're square bound. And yeah, they have more than just Spidey in it. It's pretty cool. Um, this came in with the uh, the Secret Wars and all that, that, that score. So I got this for under a dollar. And it's not as good condition as the other square bounds I had. But um, that I paid up at an LCS for, but it's still they're pretty neat to have, you know. Here's uh, number fifteen. I guess these aren't too hard to get. Marvel boy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Little Marvel boy. The Caves of Doom. Um, number two of Flair. Really, the anatomy is kind of weird there, but uh, and the shadowing and stuff, but pretty cool. It does remind me of like indies, 80s uh, art. And uh, number two of the the Grim Ghost. Yeah, so they they were trying to break in, right? But they didn't yeah. really. How long were they around for? Do you know, just a few months, I think. Really? Um, like I said, I don't think any of their series went over like four issues, from what I've seen. Huh. Pretty clean copy. If I, if, I, if I remember right, um, I read somewhere that they, they had distribution problems where they couldn't get the books distrib distributed real well. There's another Grim Ghost cover. Who's that right there? Oh, we got someone laying down there. Pretty cool. Yeah. Beat it in battle. Um, I have some uh, older Fantastic Four. Here's a 203. And apparently, they're not um, the Fantastic Four. If you look closely, they look. They were probably um, scrolls. I would wager. I would uh, bet. 
Yeah, it's probably a safe bet. <laughs> yeah. Either that or illusions of some kind from uh, somebody. Yeah, a lot of these are doubles too. Um, so these will be going into the double pile on blog spot. 219. This is all pre burn. I think some of these uh, covers coming up are uh, Prisoners of the Space God. Oh, I used to have that one. That was one yeah. of the first issues I bought of the Fantastic Four. Wow. Yeah, super clean copy. <clears throat> more pre-burn. So, Will, do you have any more you'd like to share? Or um, are we going to wrap it up here soon? Yeah, I mean, whatever you want to do. I, I pulled out a whole long box, but I don't plan on showing the whole long box. <laughs> <laughs> but we could and switch over to you, buddy. Let's, why don't we switch over to you? All right, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll, we'll finish off with a couple more uh, books here. Uh, we have Medic. This is a James Tynan book, early one. This is issue two. For some reason, issue one really exploded. I think they, um, you know, they had put it into some kind of production, if you will, or uh, they had optioned it. I think that's that's the the better word for it. It was optioned, and so it kind of became kind of became a thing. Yeah, and I I think I pulled this out of a fifty cent bin. So cool. Um, this was a really good uh, series. I liked uh, East of West. This is issue number two. I don't have issue number one because that's in my autograph box, but um, it's autographed by Hickman and, and Dragota. But cool. This is issue two. This one is actually really cool. I will pick it up. And we'll take it out. I actually, the... I actually read some of that East of West. Um, yeah, but I, I didn't get it all. I didn't, I didn't collect it all. It kind what? of fell off. It. it went on for uh, maybe fifty something issues. Yeah, but the art is just really good. Like I've seen Dragota do like Spider Man and stuff, and for me that didn't work. But Dragota's art on on this book to me is some of his best. Cool. That's work I've ever seen. And they really built they built like a whole dystopian world out of this. I'm trying to see if there's more of a splash page. I don't think we really get the splashy stuff till till the world is set. But they even did a guidebook for East of West, because I think Hickman had just put so much uh so so, so much work into developing this world. Yeah. So it was just, just really cool. The coloring and and the artwork. And there was this one like cowboy type character that I related to. Everyone was like, everyone was an antihero pretty much in that book. There weren't. I don't know. Were there any pure hearts? I don't remember that. You know. Mm -hmm. I remember it being pretty uh, existential or whatever. Um. It basically, um, I'm not sure if I if I grasp the the entirety of your question, but um, basically, it, it revolves around a child who sees the world through um, this is like visor, this machine he wears, and um, they're technically the the coming of the end. You know, they're like the antichrist, if you will. <laughs> right. Yeah. But they they wear this this machine that changes their view of the world to keep them kind of out of the loop of what, what actually is happening on cool. the planet. So it's, it's a, it's a actually, it's a really, really interesting book. Um, we'll keep it moving. Uh, this is Hawkeye number two. I think I just picked this up uh, cause it has, it actually does have a first appearance in here. Uh, first, I want to say fuse. 
but it's just I just like the artwork on a lot of these Kelly Thompson Hawkeye books. Sure. So um here's brightest day. This is a variant cover. I did not pay whatever it says there, ten dollars for it. <laughs> um, because I have two of them. So I'm pretty sure these came out of a 50 cent bin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of those did, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is another brightest day. Did you read all of the Jeff Johns uh, Lantern stuff? Uh, no, uh, not yeah. all of it. There was a lot of it. Um, yeah. This was, I picked these up uh, 2000, right? These, these came out in 2010. And I don't think I really got back into comic book collecting until 2011, 2012. Right. So. It was good. It was hard for me I, not knowing a lot of the backstory. I was, I think I was kind of getting lost when I was jump, jumping in, but. Right. Um, here is Black Panther number four. Just a cool cover. I think that's the, no, it's not even the second appearance of Tosin. Tosin doesn't show back up until later on. Yeah. Star Wars, the High Republic. There's a couple of firsts. In these books, as all all the Star Wars basically now have a lot of first appearances. Yeah, this one actually has a cameo of a uh, character Lorna D, who's a big villain. This is her first cover appearance here. Yeah, I think I have a lot of these actually. Here's some more Devil's Reign, and uh, here's another Crimson Star Wars Crimson. This um. This was uh, basically a Crimson Rain. Basically, is a is a story of a group that actually tried to take out the Empire. They, yeah, they, I remember that. Yeah, they didn't really succeed. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, here's crossover. Um, if you remember, this was a Donny Cates. Yeah, vehicle. yeah. Um, I jumped out of that after a few issues too. Um, did yeah. Did you make it through? I did not. Um, actually, I don't think I ever finished it. But I probably have. I think it's only went up to like ten or eleven issues. But this is issue uh, number seven, and this is the. I believe this is the first and only issue not written by Donny Cates. This one was uh, written by Chip Zdarsky. Oh yeah, yeah. And did he write himself into it? He wrote himself into the book, yeah. so he's actually a character in in here. I think he was written into the the book before he actually wrote it. Um, yeah. I think Donny Cates had actually put him in as a comic book creator. That's funny. And, and then he uh, he he got to write an issue of it. Yeah. <laughs> so and we can end there. Cool. Yeah, it's six o'clock. Um, I want to I want to thank you guys for uh, for making it and uh, this far. And uh, we had some technical difficulties today for some reason. Maybe I'll figure that out if it's on my end. But um, yeah, it's probably just Streamyard acting weird. <laughs> honestly, really. Um, I've I've seen him do some strange stuff on just just me doing my stuff. I've, if you watched my show last Saturday, I had to completely reboot and and start over again because the sh the whole show wasn't watchable. Oh um, wow! Yeah, you know, so I had to reboot and and uh, you know put in a link from the original to the the new show and and and, and just go back and try and make it watchable for anybody looking for it, but. Uh, well, Zodiac uh, made it to the end here <laughs> with us. That's yeah. great, man. We really appreciate it. This is the second time I've had guests, and it was a lot of fun, man. It was it was really cool. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's fun doing this. Yeah, enjoy it. I'll Me try too. doing it again uh, next week, and hopefully, uh, Mike can make it in here. Um, and yeah, yeah, um, it's hopefully good. Hickey can make it in here too. That was really nice. So yeah, it's it's. Nice it was nice to see him, even if it was just for a couple seconds. Yeah, yeah, totally. It seemed like he got the crowd going, right? He got the chant. Yeah, yeah. yeah going. Well, that's the, part uh, of the show, you know, the, the chanting. So, um, yeah. but yeah, I do yeah, like I just, the uh, the format. It forces me to go through my uh, my long boxes. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that I need to um, just try to think a little bit more what I want to show. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's cool. Yeah, if we if we I mean if we know we're going to do it on a regular basis, we can kind of plan out a little bit better what we're going to show i guess yeah totally exactly i well, will always bring my uh my my haul from that from the wednesday <laughs> yeah yeah i appreciate yeah that. i enjoy seeing the new books because otherwise you know you, you don't uh 
yeah. I don't necessarily get to see them that much. So, I mean, I can look at them online, but it's just a picture, you know, and, and they right. really look good. I, I mean, everything looks better when you're holding it on a camera. I'll go back and watch my own episodes just and look at the books and be like, wow, that looks really good. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I miss stuff all the time on the covers and stuff. That's why I like how I'm doing um, the videos now because I actually do it for my own pleasure because – you know, you you intently look at a cover. You think you're picking up everything, and then right, you yeah. Know, the camera just and, picks and, up stuff. And I, you know, I I started watching my own episodes just so I can improve the videos. You know, so what yeah. what am I doing wrong? What am I messing up? What's yeah? You know, and and then because I record them ahead of time, I'm usually about two weeks ahead. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, some, somebody will leave a comment and I'll have no idea what they're talking about. Then I'll have to go back and look at the episode to figure out what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, Cause it'll just be some random comment on some random thing. I, I threw off off the top of my head, you know? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's yeah. It's just so I got I like in the habit of, of like watching like the night before the show that's going to air the next day or the next couple of days just to kind of skim through them. So I know what's coming up. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Because you were planning you know, your videos. So in advance. Yeah. Cause, cause right now I'm, I'm, I'm past Easter on what I'm videotaping right now. Wow. Right? What I, so, um, so yeah, it's, it's, as so I've, I've mentioned on the channel, it, it, time travels hard. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Cause people are you know, commenting. Constantly on jumping you're, back and forth. Yeah. And then, I made it even more confusing by adding the live claim sales because right. you know I want to I want to promote the the claim sale during the week and but I've actually recorded those episodes 2 weeks earlier. Right, right. So I actually I have a notebook with every episode listed and and it's getting more of like okay, what do I need to talk about here for what's coming up on this sale versus you know it's it's just a whole the right. whole thing it would be so much easier if i just went ahead and did everything in a straight line but it's when you're yeah. doing a video every day you can't you just can't you know right. yeah. um well we're gonna wrap it up here um you know we just got two more viewers but we're out <laughs> <laughs> thanks, for, uh, thanks so much you guys for showing up hopefully our, our other friends could make it on next week when, if we do this Really enjoy you guys, Will and Rob, man, big time. Love your perspectives. And, uh, yeah, talk to you later. All right. Bye, Thank everyone. You, Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.